So uh, today uh, we're talking about uh, chapter two of the book, which is about uh, first steps. So for uh, the uh, learning objective, I will be briefly going to look at uh, introduction uh, to ggplot2 capabilities. Uh, we are also going to learn about uh, key components of every plot because in every plot, uh, one of the three main components before we can create uh, any visualization using ggplot2, we need to have the data and this data need to be a tidy data. We need to have a uh, map variable to aesthetics. And we need to talk also talk about uh, the geometry. Then we are going to learn about uh, faceting, which is about uh, creating uh, multiple sub, uh, splitting our uh, data visualization into uh, sub uh, multiple, uh, sub multiple. Then we are going to see a few uh, different gems that are that are in ggplot two. We are also going to look at how to modify axis. Then uh, lastly, we are going to look at how we can save uh, our visualization in which we have created uh, into this. Uh, so for the first part uh, of the book, first I need to, we need to briefly talk about uh, uh, ggplot2. We need to know the origin of ggplot2. And, but the idea about uh, this uh, package called ggplot2, it was first uh, brought by uh, Leland uh, Wilkinson book because he is the man, because the author of ggplot2 at Lewicam picks uh, the idea uh, from Leland Wilkinson, which, uh, which uh, he described uh, that every graphics, uh, there are various uh, components, uh, layers that must be in every uh, graphics. So Hadley uh, took uh, this idea from Leland Wilkinson, uh, and the first book, I think the book, it was first published in 1999. So I picked uh, this idea and began to work on this uh, package uh, in R called uh, GG, ggplot2, which, which uh, builds upon uh, at least idea. So as we say, Leland Wilkinson grammar of graphic formalized two main principles in his plotting framework. So he said that every graphics must be made up of distinct layers of grammatical elements because in every graphics there are several layers uh, and we keep on adding on these layers before uh, we are able to build uh, any visualization. So minimum full plot through aesthetic uh, mapping, um, but for uh, every visualization using ggplot2, we need to have an idea that that, uh, that we need to have an idea that we need to, there are three uh, main layers that we need to use before we can create any uh, visualizations. But outside those three layers of the data, the aesthetics and geometry, there are several other layers uh, that we need still need to learn in order for us uh, to master the ggplot2 package. So first of all, before we can create uh, they do talk about before we can create uh, any visualization. When reading through this chapter, we need to have data. And this data is not just any type of data. The data sets uh, need to be a tidy data because in the Alpha Data Science book, Harley has, uh, he has mainly described uh, what, what is a tidy data. is a data in which every column is a variable. Every row is going to be an observation and every cell is going to be a value which gives us a table. So those are the type of data that fits very well uh, with ggplot2 because it becomes very easy for us to use it in our visualization. So the next thing for we to think of once we have this tidy data is aesthetic mapping. Aesthetic mapping there, we are, we are going to see how we can link variables in which we can find from this data uh, to the visual properties of the plot. So those variables in which we are linking, those variables, they are going to be scaled down into numbers in which the system can understand. So after the aesthetic mapping, we need to also look at uh, the geometry. The geometry simply refers uh, uh, to the type of visualization in which uh, we want to create, because if 
it is a scatter plot, we know that we are going to use a gem point. If it is a bar plot, we are going to use a gem bar. So after the geometry columns, uh, because geometry talks about the visualization, we need to look at uh, the facets. So facet is very useful if we want to create plotting small multiples of our data in order to, uh, for us to what, convey our message uh, to stakeholder. Then we look at the statistics, which represent, which is a representation of our data to aid understanding. Then we look at also look at the coordinates, uh, the space in which the data will be plotted. So these are the coordinate systems. So we need to understand there are different uh, coordinate system uh, when uh, working with ggplot2, but the default uh, coordinate system is always uh, the Cartesian uh, coordinate system. Then the team, the team is not uh, actually is not linked uh, with the data, but it helps is all non-data ink. It helps us to what customize uh, the look of our data visualization. Uh, I think uh, that is basically all what I have uh, for the introduction section. So for the next part, so uh, uh, in this part we'll be looking at uh, main. We will be looking at the MPG data sets. Uh, this is a data set uh, that is uh, that come along uh, with uh, ggplot2. And in order for me to assess this data set, we just need to say ggplot2. Uh, we call the ggplot2 with the from the namespace and look at the data, which is MPG. So we can just get uh, access uh, to, we can have access to the data, which is the, the, the MPG. And the MPG, it has the manufacturer, uh, the manufacturer of the car, the model of the car, the displacement, the year, the cylinder, the transmission, the drive, uh, uh, highway and also the class of the car. So a brief uh, description about the data, this is the cylinder and highway which are measures uh, in miles per, miles per gallon. We also have the displacements, which is engine displacement in liters. We also have the drive, which is the front wheel, which is F, the rear wheel, which is R, and the four wheel, which is uh, label of four. We also have the model is the model of the car. The class is two seater, SUV, and also compact, etc. Okay, so I don't know if uh, this uh, there are any comments or questions before I proceed uh, to the next part. No, no questions from me. Okay, no so. Questions. So just uh, as I said in the intro uh, to this chapter, I think uh, every data visualization we create uh, using ggplot2, uh, we first of all, we call uh, the ggplot function. The ggplot function uh, is going to initialize the plotting window in our R studio. So the first thing we pass to the ggplot function is always the data, the data in which uh, we want to use for our data visualization. Just as I said earlier on, uh, the data must be a tidy data. So the next thing within uh, after, uh, this is the AES, which stands for the aesthetic mapping. So within the aesthetic mapping, we are going to link uh, variables in which we can find uh, from the data uh, to the visual properties of the plot. So here we have within this MPG data set, we have a variable called displacement. We want to map displacement uh, to the x-axis. Within this same, we want to map the highway to the y-axis. So this data in which we are linking from uh, the data, which we are variables we are linking from the data to the visual properties of the plot. These variables, they are going to be scaled uh, down into values in which uh, the system uh, can understand. Then after scaling, this data will be scaled down. Then the next is the layers. So the layers simply means uh, the, the geometry. Within the layers, we, are past, we added the those layer with a plus sign. We now say the, the layer should be geom points, which stands for, which shows that we want to visualize this data uh, using uh, a scatter plot, but there are several 
uh, other geometries in which we can use uh, when creating our data visualization using uh, ggplot2. So each of those geometry is going to give us a different type of uh, data uh, visualization. So the three components, just as I said earlier, is the data in this case, the data is MPG, the aesthetics I say X is displacement, Y is highway plus uh, germ point. So when I do this, so it's go just going to give us uh, uh, this uh, scatter plot, which shows that, which shows a negative uh, relationship between displacement and highways. That means as displacement is increasing, then we have uh, lower highway miles per gallon. But the, we can also, within the aesthetic, we can also omit the X and Y variable, which we are still going to get uh, the same, we are still going to get the same result because ggplot will always know that the first argument is always going to be X, the next is going to be, uh, is going to take it to be the Y. So we are still going to have the same plot, which is valid. So I think uh, in the book, uh, there were some couple of exercises though, uh, though I, because of the computation time of the book, I choose uh, to remove those exercises from the book so that once I want to push it uh, to GitHub, it, it becomes easy for this book to build. So for those exercises, I think we have this which shows that what dot the below plot shows. So when I run this line, okay. So we have something, we have this example from the book. Okay, so we have this example, we have in a manufacturer of the car. We also have the model of the car. So once uh, we have such type of visualization, uh, it becomes hard for us uh, to read this type of graph. It becomes very difficult for us to read because there is no clear pattern. There is no clear pattern because we have four runner, four wheel drive. We have it here, but it becomes very difficult uh, for us to read this uh, kind of uh, data visualization, but if we do reorder uh, the manufacturer, uh, if we reorder this data using the FCT uh, reorder function, so we are going to be see how we can reorder uh, this data where we can easily see a uh, clear pattern in the data, which becomes very easy for us uh, to read uh, the plot. I think the second example in which I saw uh, from the notes is uh, this other scatter plot. I will just run two other two examples. So in this other one, uh, we are seeing cylinder and highway. Uh, we it becomes also uh, difficult for us to see clear pattern. But if I do remove the points here to add a random noise to this, use another geometry, we can see that this becomes very difficult because of problem of over, uh, over plotting. But if we, if we change the geometry from geom points to geom jitter to add some uh, random noise, we can just see that we can see that we have been able to spread the points a little bit. So it becomes very easy for us to see, uh, for us to see some kind of pattern that is going on uh, within uh, the data set. So I think I will just stop here because and continue uh, with my presentation. Hey, uh, so, one, uh, one question on the previous example. Okay. Uh, so and no the one before this one so right where we are plotting uh, the model versus the manufacturer right yes <laughs> so here uh, because there is one row for each uh, uh, there, there is one point for each row right 
Uh, yes. But uh, so you said that we should, uh, and even in the book, it is mentioned that uh, this may not be very useful, right? But then how do we make it useful? Uh, so uh, what, what uh, like, do we, do you have any ideas or like, uh, how can this be become more, or what changes can we make so that this becomes more useful? Okay. So what I'm saying is that, okay, probably this, according to me, at least this information could have been better presented in a table, right? Um, that, okay, this is for this model, this is the manufacturer. That's all that we are getting from here, right? Other than that, yes. there's no, no insight in this data, right? Yes, 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 yes. It can be presented with a table, yes. It can also, we can also reorder uh, manufacturer by the model, then we pre still present it with a visual visualization. The manufacturer re reorder manufactured by what? By the model, by the model. Okay. Using the FCT, I think FCT reorder, FCT reorder two function. Okay, okay, but how would that? Uh... Uh, okay, so you, you mean to say group all group all the models for each manufacturer together. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, then at least that will tell us that, okay, uh, uh, if, uh, how many models does a given manufacturer uh, provide, right? Uh, for example, let's say one of the manufacturer would, be, would, would have six, seven models. Another would have only a couple of models. So that's the kind yes, of information. Yes, I think coming. they will be able to see we will be able to see the trend. We will know which one has the highest, which one has the lowest. Got it, got it. Yes, yes. That that could yes, that could also make sense. Okay. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, I think for the next part, uh, it's about other aesthetics attributes in which we can other aesthetic attribute in which we can link to the data. So for other aesthetic attribute, we can also have color. We can also map a variable that we can find from the data to color. We can also map it to shape. And also for size can be mapped to variables in the data. So we can have some, some certain categorical variables in our data. We can map that variable to color, to shape, and to size. So this variable in which we are mapping to color, to shape, and size, these variables are they are going to be scaled. After scaling, uh, the, there, is, there is going to be a guide guides, which is going to be drawn in order for us to read uh, the data visualization uh, in which uh, we are creating. Then we said the class variables of the MPG that I said has seven unique values. The plot can be assigned to a specific color to each value by mapping class to color. So how do we see that? Because they have seven. So what do we have? We have our ggplot function, which is going to be initialized, the plotting a window with a gray background. Then we have a data here. Then within aesthetics, we select displacement be mapped to the x axis. Uh, let the highway be mapped to the y axis. Then we say color is equals to class. Then for the geometry, which controls the type of visualization, we say we need a scatter plot, which is jump point. So when we do that, we are going to have. Uh, this uh, data visualization, which shows, which shows that, which shows that highways in the Y displacement uh, is mapped to the X, is mapped to the X axis. Then we are going to have class, which is two seater, compact, mid sized minivan, pickup, subcompact, and SUV. So it's, we can read. Uh, the guide, we can use the guide uh, to now read uh, uh, the, the data visualization uh, in which uh, we are creating. So they said, including a color assignment outside the aesthetics of the geometry layer, we make all of the points to be blue. So in this case, uh, we want to map color is equals to blue, but we are doing this outside. We are doing this outside the aesthetic mapping. So in that case, all of the points all of the dice, all of the rows that can be found within this, uh, our data set will be colored to be blue because we are mapping it outside the areas. But in the subsequent, uh, we got, 
in some instances we can make because initially when I started using ggplot, I can make a mistake of mapping color equals uh, to blue within the AES. So in that case, it's going to scale because since there is nothing like color equals to blue that can be found in the data, ggplot is just going to scale color equals to blue, then it's going to give it a pinkish color, then it's going to put a place a guide there that color is equals, when you have color is equals to blue, uh, let's all color all the points by this, which is uh, one of the mistakes uh, uh, we can easily make, which we can easily make uh, such a mistake. In this case, they are mapping color is equals to drive. So when we have, uh, with the, they have shape is equals to drive. So the, the drive is going to have a different shape, three different shape. Uh, we also are going to have three, uh, three different color because we are doing this inside the AES because function. Uh, we, we can also say size is equals to what displacement since uh, displacement is a continuous uh, variable. So it's just going to give us when we have two, it's going to give us this size, we have three, it's going to give us this size, then the highest uh, size is going to be for the uh, seven, uh, seven drive. Okay, so, so faceting, just as I said earlier on, faceting is for us uh, to create uh, as a plotting, which is a small multiples of our plot subset to sub that is just like subsetting our data so and um, in ggplot2 there are two different type of faceting when we are talking about faceting we can have facet wrap which is just like a row wise we also have the facet uh, grid which is like a column wide uh, by column so and within these facets we can specify the number of columns and by, and also the number of rows so uh, just our previous example. So we just need to add a new layer, uh, which is a facet wrap, and we call it by this function. We, we start with a tilde, and then we call the class a variable. So it's just going to split uh, this uh, data set into three rows and also three columns. I think that uh, the, is the default, three rows and Three column. We have two seater car. We have compact car. Uh, we have the midsize minivan, pickup, and sub compact and SUV. So, but I think there were some exercises here. Say use faceting to explore the three-way relationship between fuel economy and engine size and number of cylinders. How does faceting by number of cylinders change your assessment of the relationship between the? I think I remove. I remove that from the notes, just based on the recommendation of uh, John that uh, we should try to make things simple. So this one was our preview initial plot without faceting the data. Okay, this was the initial plot. So this was a plot when we facet by the cylinder. Okay, when we facet by the cylinder, it shows it's four, this is five, this is six, and also this is uh, eight. This is eight wheel drive. So we just need to call a tilde, then we call uh, the column. We call, uh, we call the column there, which is cylinder. So for the germ, the jump part geometry simply refers uh, to helps refers to the type of uh, visualization in which uh, we want to create. And in ggplot2, uh, there are different types of uh, there are different type of jumps. There are different type of jumps in ggplot2, and and each of these jumps uh, they always have they always have uh, their own uh, default uh, statistics. They always come with their own default statistics, um, but we can we can override 
we can override this germ. I think I saw one important uh, uh, tutorial. Will let me put that in the chat. Let me put in the chat. Then we look at each. Uh, we look at each. Let me put it in the chat. Then I share a new window. Yeah. Okay. So just what they did in this. Is that uh, there are different type of germ in ggplot. So when I say germ points, It's just going to give me the. Uh, it's just just going to give me all the necessary arguments uh, that can go into jump points, which is the we need to have a x, we need to have the y, we need to also we can also have x minimum, x maximum, y minimum, y maximum, color, size, line type, alpha, fill, shape, stroke, and group. We can also remove points. To say we have geometric rates. It's just going to give us all the arguments uh, that can go. I think uh, this was a very, a very useful when I was going through the chapter. So let's let me go back to the notes. So for Jim, give a similar scatter plot. Other germs include germ smooth, which is going to fit a smooth line uh, to the data. We can check the help to see what are the necessary arguments uh, that can go within uh, germ smooth, which we're going to have germ underscore smooth. Let's see, no documentation, ggplot2, gm underscore smooth. So we can see that it's the I, so in within just smooth, we have the mapping which defines is null, the data is null, the start is always smooth, Position is always identity because it's going to use everything from the data. Uh, the formula is also null. Standard error is true. Is set to true by the NA.RM force orientations. We can also have start smooth, which is similar uh, uh, to jump smooth. Mapping data. So these are just the uh, the. The documentation we can also span controls the amount of smoothing for the default low, smooth, smaller. So, uh, wait. Okay. Fewer. So, just an example here, we are still using the same example. I just added a new layer, which is uh, Geom Smooth. So, it's going to fit uh, the confidence intervals uh, within uh, the data. We can see the confidence interval. We can see the smooth line, which shows negative uh, relationship between highway and displacement. But we can choose to set uh, the standard error equals to false because by default the standard error within jokes boots is always set to true so we can we can turn it off by to say that se is equals to false though in that case uh, the standard errors confidence interval will be removed but we can also use uh john box plots i think john box plot is just going to uh, plot a box plot which helps us uh, to summarize uh, our data uh, using the five uh, number uh, summary, uh, which is going to give us a box plot uh, example. We can also use uh, Jomjita. I think Jomjita is just going to 
plots, a scatter plot, uh, adding some random noise uh, around uh, the data. So we can also have John violin, which is going to draw uh, the violin plots, which is uh, just what we have here, which shows uh, also shows the distribution of our data. We can also have, uh, they also show an example of using John histogram, which is going to draw uh, the histogram. Uh, and in this histogram is going to be in our data. So it's going to group uh, those uh, data sets based on different uh, bin, but we can choose to, they do explain in the book that we should try as much as possible to play with different, uh, different bin width uh, to adjust uh, the bin width to see the ones uh, that really help us to show our data, but we can also have a uh, geom frequency polygon, which also draws uh, a frequency polygon to show uh, the distribution of our data. So we can see that the default bin here is 30, but we can we can adjust we can adjust the bin width a little bit to see which one best uh, show uh, the uncertainty within our data. So this other one here is for we have we are we're using the use the diamond data set. Uh, the map cut to the x axis and they say the geometry uh, to be bar. So in that case, it's going to, uh, we are going, the ggplot2 is going to count every number of cuts. It's also going to plot that count uh, in the y axis, then it's going to map the cut to the x axis, then the count to the y axis. So in Jumba, this is just that's exactly what is going on, going on here. The data they use was diamond, and this is the diamond data set. Uh, the default start is start count. So what ggplot2 is going to do is going to say, oh, let's we have cuts that is in map to the to the x-axis. So it's going to look for every count of the cuts. Then the count is going to be placed in the y-axis. And these are the proportions of each, which is one. So, which is this is the same uh, visualization that we saw uh, earlier on. So, in this other example, the map MPG, they were using the they use the MPG data sets. Uh, uh, manufacturer was mapped to the x-axis, uh, displacement to the y-axis. Uh, they use uh, Jumba but they use that identity. So they, they, they override uh, the default statistics because uh, the default statistics for Jumba is that count, but you can, we can override that default statistics to use that identity. That identity simply means uh, don't do anything, but use the values I am passing in from the data uh, to to create uh, the the visualization. So, if we do that, uh, we are going to have uh, this uh, bar plot, which uh, still which shows uh, the which, which is something like MPG, and then group by all the manufacturer, and then summarize some of the displacement. So when we do that. Uh, it's just like this, which is Aldi, which is this. This is the tabular format of the data. This is in table format, while the other is uh, in visual. So, but we can also have maybe uh, we want to choose a different uh, geometry. In this case, we're using geom line. We are using the economics data that is, comes uh, with ggplots. Aesthetics, we map dates to the x-axis. Y-axis, we say the unemployment divided by the population. Then we use a job line. So it's just going to give us uh, this time series plot. Uh, we can also have it in this way. X is dates. Y is unemployed. Unemploy meant uh, in education. So we, we are also using a uh, job line.
So they said uh, to investigate this plot further, we can draw them on the same plots. So here we, we create a year function, which is a function of x as posit lt of x dollars and y plus uh, 1900. So when we run this, we have ggplot economics. We are using John Parts. I think uh, John Parts is similar to John Line. I think in John Line, the default, the line draws, it draws the line from the left to the right. Why John Parts can be either, it can be from the right to left, or the, it can be either way. So we are just adding jump points. Then within jump point, we say aesthetics, color is equals to year of the date. So when we do that, so in that case, it's going to give us a color gradient, 2010, 2000, 1990, 1980, and 1970. So we can see. Okay. So this section mainly talk about how we can we are will be able to modify our the, the axis uh, using ggplot2. I think this there is the x lab, there is y lab, there is also the labs function uh, within the ggplot2. So here we say alpha is equals to what one over three because alpha is going to help us to control the transparency of our data visualization. So here in this example, we use all of the same alpha one over three plus, we are using the X lab function. We put the labels for the X Y lab function to label the Y. So when we do that, we can also set the X lab on the Y lab. We can set it to null. So when we set it to null, uh, we have removed the X and Y labels. We, we, they also discuss about X limits and Y limits. Uh, the X limits and Y limits, uh, they are very useful when we want to zoom in to a certain area in our data visualization. But one drawback of using this function is that uh, there are some instance we can specify some values, any values in which goes outside the limits in which we specify. So ggplot2 is going to drop those uh, values as well, it's just going to drop those values as missing just, and it's going to return a message that a certain number of rows from our data set has been dropped. But I always, in my in the best practices, I think we'll see that in future chapter, it's better when we want to zoom into a specific area, we should do that within the code uh, Cartesian. Within the code Cartesian, we can specify our limits there. In that case, our data points, all data points are always uh, preserved. So we have this uh, default uh, visualization using John Jitter. The width of the Jitter is 0 0.25. So here we have X limits should be, we want to zoom to see just front wheel and rear wheel drive. Y limit should be between 20 and 30. And we can see that GDPlot2 returns warning that remove 139 rows containing missing values from GEOM points. So as we can see, we have front wheel and rear wheel. So we have zoomed to show those two drive. And we can see the Y limit is just the same thing that we specified that we want to see in our data viz. So those are the same, those are the same 20 and 30. So it's 20 and 30. So any other thing that fall outside that range, uh, any other data points, it will be dropped as uh, missing data. So in the final part, uh, they do talk about outputs, which is saving uh, this, our plot to a variable. So we can have uh, this data viz, we can save it, assign it to a variable called P. Then we can print this value. We can just print P, which is going to show uh, the, 
the visualization we create. But if we want to save this uh, to Dix, we can use the ggsave function within uh, the ggplot2 package, then the name of the visualization, the object in which we have say, assigned to a variable that is now in our environment, the width of the visualization, and the height of the visualization is set to five. Uh, and this is going to save uh, this uh, data visualization to Dix. Then we can look at uh, the summary of the object that we created, which is P, which describes the structure of our database, shows that the data is manufacturer, model, displacement year. The class is 234 rows of 11 variables. Then the mapping, we have X, we have displacement, Y, we have highway, color, which is a factor, cylinder, then the faceting, which is a ggplot2 objects. I think we'll, we'll let see more about this ggplot2 object when we are uh, working with the future chapter uh, of, of the book, because this is just a brief uh, introduction chapter. I think that's, that is all. The next part is just uh, the meeting uh, video for the, past, the last course. Hello. Yes, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I also didn't know about uh, that link that you shared. So I, I think it will be very useful. Yes, yes. Hello, Lokesh. I don't know if you are still there. Yes. Uh, yes, all of them. Uh, so uh, I didn't understand your question. What did you say? Okay, I said this is all I have for the chapter. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. So uh, actually, I had a couple of questions on some of the points. Um, okay. Uh, so first is uh, the use using color within aesthetics, right? Uh, that was somewhere in the middle of uh, the chapter, right? Where uh, color, if you use, so if you use color, within aesthetics uh, uh, it gives it doesn't give you the expected result right uh, so here if you use color equal to blue within the aes it will not give you blue right it will give you something else okay let's see that okay so let me change this color within aesthetics equals to blue Okay, so here in this example, we have, we are still, we use data, which is MPG, then aesthetics, I map uh, displacement to the X axis, I weigh to the Y axis, then I say color is equals to blue. Because if we look at the MPG data set, there is mm -hmm. nothing, there is nothing, there is no column called blue. Correct, correct. So in there the is no column called blue. Yes, so it's going to scale all the row down. Then it's going to give it a default color, which is this pinkish color. Then it's going to create the guide for us. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. So uh, whatever you put there, right? In, even blue, whatever else you put there, it, it's always give, going to give us this pinkish color, right? Yes, even though if I remove this blue and put and green. Yeah, put anything, yeah. So it's, it's still going to say, well, anywhere pink, you yeah. see green, give it this pinkish color. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, so basically this is, when you see code like this, this, this is a bug, right? If you see color within that and there is no column against that color, then it's a bug. Yes, yes, right? yes. Okay, got it. Uh, cool, so yeah, I, I think very uh, good good presentation, uh, Olu of me, so... Um, I think you covered uh, most of the points, uh, all the points pretty well. Um, I, I, I uh, the the link that you shared uh, that you're going to add in the notes, right? Yes. Um, yes. The, uh, where you can try different jobs. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Then uh, I, I think uh, I even I I don't have any other questions. Uh, so Lucy, if you do, do you have any other queries? 
Uh, not really. Uh, only for the next presentation, I have to do it, right? I already signed up. Yes, so for the next presentation, uh, I can share my screen. Just give me a second. Okay. So for the next one, it's your, uh, you, and then for the next one, I have enrolled my name. For this one, I think we can wait until uh, until a week or, or if, if there's no one, then obviously I'll, I'll add it here also. For, but at least for the collective jobs, I have added my name. Uh, right. And then we can keep adding names as we go on. So you are okay presenting the next week, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so yeah, if there's if there's nothing else, then uh, then we can uh, we, uh, we can finish the call. We can end the call. Okay. Thank you very much. See okay. You thanks. Next week. Bye. Thank you so much, all of you. Very very good presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.